Hello and welcome once again to the Somerville News Roundup with the Somerville Journal. I'm Jane Regan from Somerville Neighborhood News here at the Somerville Media Center and I'm here with Julia Taliesin from the Somerville Journal. Julia, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks Jane. How are you? Pretty good, kind of chilly. Today <laughs> is, uh, I went running, I'm sure you went running or walking here and I saw ice for the first time. Uh -huh, me too. So um, I guess uh, that is a reminder that we're going to be heading, spending a lot more time indoors pretty soon. True. Um, true. And so I just wanted to start right off with uh, a nice place to spend some time indoors. Mm -hmm. I heard that you went somewhere that I have not yet had the opportunity to visit. I think it's called Nibble. Is it? What is yes. that? It sounds like a gerbil food store. <laughs> it's not a gerbil <laughs> food store. Um, so I'm sure many in Somerville have already checked out Bow Market in all its glory. Um, so Nibble Kitchen is a new addition to Bow Market. Um, it's right next to Remnant Brewing. Mm -hmm. um, but really what's pretty cool about this place is um, it's, it's opened and run by the Somerville Arts Council. And it's actually the first restaurant um, ever to be run and owned by the Somerville by an arts council in the nation. Yeah, I've um, never so I've yeah, never heard of that. Exactly. So it's a new endeavor, um, and it's it's a great you know small space. It's not technically a pop up. It's a permanent addition to Bell Market, um, but it has that kind of you know pop up casual feel. Um, right now, it just recently opened, so they're kind of in their soft opening phase. Mm -hmm. They have a grand opening on December third, where they'll have you know treats and snacks and parties and VIPs and all of that fun stuff. Um, but right now, um, if you go on their website, um, you can find that they have a rotating menu. Every day, Thursday through Sunday, is a different chef, a different cuisine. Um, each chef has participated in the Somerville Arts Council's Nibble program, which is kind of like an entrepreneurship program, which trains um, interested chefs in the community in vending, um, in business, um, and any chef who is part of the Nibble Kitchen restaurant has gone through this training with the Somerville Arts Council. Um, so right now, there are five chefs mm -hmm. who are on that rotating menu. There is Brazilian street food, there is um, Bolivian food, um, Ethiopian, uh, Venezuelan arepas, um, so much. I was there um, and got to talk to Sandra Suarez, who is the incredible um, Bolivian immigrant who is purveying the Bolivian bites there. Um, and she was just so excited um, to kind of be kind of opening and operating in a permanent space. She said it was really a dream of hers. So I have a question. You said right now there are about five chefs. Do any of them have their own restaurants or is this kind of like their, their, their hope of their breaking into maybe eventually having full restaurants? Well, I haven't spoken to each chef individually. Mm -hmm. However, no, right now, none, none of the chefs have their own restaurant at this mm -hmm. point. So this is this is their restaurant, kind okay. of collectively, if you will. And is there room for someone to go sit down with their family if they wanted to go? It's and a pretty small space in and of itself, like most of the spaces in Bow Market. So there's a small um, kind of like ledge, like more of a bar type seating, a okay. couple seats. Um, but it's more, you know, like um, the pierogi place, like South, like it, there's... You, it's kind of you get food, and then you take it to the brewery, you take it to Rebel, oh, or you take okay. it. Oh, okay. See, because you, know, you, you were like, I'm sure by now everyone's gone to the bull market. Well, no, I have not. <gasps> but I'm going to go on Friday, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go look. Awesome. <laughs> so I just know where Bow Street is. Sure, so, sure. but I've been out of town a little bit uh, <laughs> until quite recently. So mm -hmm. I will check it out. Okay, so it's sort of takeout, takeout for yeah. in-house, but I suppose you could also take out to go home. Okay. And I was trying to think, like, wait a sec arts what is there like painting around and then I realized duh what an idiot gastronomy is an art yeah well so. that was what I thought was really interesting I talked to Rachel Strutt who's the cultural director at the Somerville Arts Council right. and what a what a cool human first of all but she she was essentially saying that that like you know we are always trying to make the Arts Council's mission more inclusive and you know what is more cultural than food you right know what I mean? and and culture is art and food is culture and right. like it all works together so they were really excited to kind of broaden their mission like into this area. I think it's great because a lot of art I had the privilege of having like a fancy education I went to university I go to museums but really that's only one kind of art mm -hmm. so exactly. and this country is so rich and diverse with sort of art up and down the socioeconomic ladder this is a way of introducing folks to some some of the riches we have right here in our neighborhoods. Exactly. Well, that's great. So speaking of neighborhoods, mm. or should I say wards, 
wards. Or should I say precincts? <laughs> Whatever you want. As you know, <laughs> last week we had the municipal elections uh, here, and I think you were out in the streets. Sure was. I was too. Um, I was also watching the participation level to see if mm -hmm. the participation of eligible voters would be what it was two years ago. I think it was about 30%. Mm -hmm. um, it was around 25% uh, this time, which isn't as good, although it's still pretty good. But it's kind of... well. I think the, I actually did a little bit of research on that and looked back at like years and years past. Okay, and, and will folks be able to read about this? They absolutely this? will. The article's already up. Okay. Um, <laughs> but really what I thought was interesting is that yes, in 2017, the participation was, it was almost 150% above what it had been in 2015. That's it was true. a huge jump. And there are a couple reasons for that. Mostly it was that there were a couple pretty hotly contested races in wards, specifically Ward 2 and Ward 3. Mm -hmm. um, and I think our revolution, exactly. the organization had people knocking doors exactly. to encourage people to go out and vote no matter who they were going to vote for. Exactly. Right, because yeah. I saw some of their like scripts of what they had people say, and it wasn't like, hi, please go out and vote, but only if you're going to vote yes, for so-and-so. Vote, vote, it was vote. like, hi, please go out and vote in several languages. Mm -hmm. because you should. Exactly. Because it's exactly. an alleged democracy. Yes. So I thought that that was really interesting because even though, yes, this year was only 25% and, you know, compared to participation in the state elections, in the midterm elections, in the presidential elections, that is very, very low for Somerville. Somerville mm -hmm. is usually like more like 75, 80% participation, mm. which is very high regionally because Somerville gets out the vote apparently. Yeah, um, more than I would say like the national average for presidentials in the 60s, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Um, but it's still, it means something. And, you know, mm -hmm. I was chatting with um, Rand Wilson, who, who ran the Marion for Mayor campaign, um, but who has also been a part of our revolution. And, you know, he was saying exactly that, that really, they were really happy with the results. You know, even though Marianne didn't win, um, she got almost 40% of the vote, um, which is one of the, I think it is probably the highest um, against the incumbent, um, Joe Curtitoni, that someone has ever achieved um, thus far challenging him. No, it's a big, it's a really big yeah. deal, I think. It is um, a big deal. Actually, uh, we have a video package mm -hmm. from uh, reporter Stephanie Wittenbach. I, I gave her a little uh, bit of help, but she mostly did it all herself, and um, she's one of the reporters for Some Real Neighborhood News. and. She talked to the chief elections commissioner. She also talked to Rand Wilson, and she talked to some voters. Let's take a look. You have to vote, especially if you're a woman. We, it's a, you know that's a privilege. There's countries where people, are, you know, are dead dying and they can't vote. So yeah, I'll come out, snow sums, everything. I, no matter what, I'll vote. Well, voting in the election is a good thing for people to do. You know, you have to elect your, uh, you know, your representative. You know, you have to know who is governed, you know. That's, so it's always a pleasure for me to come. 13,000 people turned out. One of their concerns, the mayoral race. Eight-term Mayor Joe Curtitone was being challenged by Marianne Wallace. We get uh, Mayor Joe's uh, postcard every year at Christmas time, and <clears throat> that's enough for me. <laughs> I have to live here. But can I say one thing that may go against me? I believe in term limits. No mayor in the city's history has served for more than 10 years. You don't ever want to have a monopoly. Um, if you have a monopoly that stagnates change, it stagnates process, progress, um, I think on paper he's done a good job, but I think a lot of those changes have been based on him being pushed. Um, and I would prefer to have a mayor for the town that I chose to live in that uh, truly believes in what the change is going to be. The city's elections commissioner is more concerned about getting every vote counted. At the end of the day, the ballots are, uh, are accounted by the machine. We have a, a tabulator at each precinct, and once all the ballots are in, the voters are finished, 8 o'clock comes, and, and after the last person has cast their vote, and once everything is the way it's supposed to be, we press the button, and, and that generates the, the uh, tape with the results. Later at City Hall, campaign workers waited anxiously. Curtitone won a ninth term, but Wallace was not far behind. Although Marianne Wallace lost the race, she won a lot by entering this campaign. The mayor moved to embrace a lot of the issues that she supported, and we consider that a victory as a result of the race. In spite of how the weather turned out, people still came out to play their part in democracy. 
Okay, so um, yeah, that was uh, really fun to get out in the street and talk to people. Although it's interesting, we found people were nervous about speaking and it wasn't just because of the hotly contested mayoral race. I have a feeling that uh, some of the anti-press rhetoric from down in Washington, D.C. has had its impact all the way up here. People said, I don't want my name used. I don't want to be in the news. I don't want my face on television. And I've been working in and around Somerville for six years, and including during elections. And I, I feel like the national anti-journalism, anti-press, and or just nervousness about having an opinion uh, sort of atmosphere of the country has even affected us here. So that was kind of depressing. Um, the other thing I would just say uh, from a political science point of view is I think 25% participation rate of eligible voters is good. But if we compare that to Europe and cities in Europe, it's pretty, it's pretty shameful. So um, I think that we still are hanging on to a democracy, a democratic system here locally. Mm -hmm. But I sure hope that um, as news and media literacy and civics comes back into the schools, because it will, because there's some bills in the state house that are being that are going to obviously pass. I sure hope folks get more involved because that's the only way we can we can impact everything from the budget to the construction going on outside. Seriously. Now, um, speaking of legislation, I think that you uh, have an article coming up, or maybe you. Just written. Okay, just written, and it's related to campaigning, isn't it? And it's a st is it a state uh, piece of state legislation yes. or federal? It's a piece of state legislation. However, um, our Congresswoman Ayanna Presley was actually at a panel um, last week in Boston to talk about this. Mm -hmm. um, she was a trooper. She actually had laryngitis, <laughs> but she made it through to speak on this panel, wow. um, specifically about um, a law that several representatives, including um, Pat Jalen and Connolly, Mike Connolly, who also represents Somerville. Um, have put forward that would make childcare a legal campaign expense, which right now it is not. Hmm. And both of them spoke about how it was actually uh, Lee Erica Palmer, um, who was a former uh, school committee member. She just stepped down um, in Somerville, how it was really her story that actually inspired them to put forward legislation on huh. this matter. It's not a new issue. Um, there are numerous states, I think almost 14, who, who already have legislation like this. They do? Yes. So Massachusetts no would not be leading in this okay. regard. That We would be following up um, on an issue that kind of a lot of studies have already shown is, is really, really relevant and really important that it, it makes sense if the goal is to have a more diverse kind of elected leadership, um, then this is kind of a no-brainer. And, you know, one thing the panel really emphasized is that this is not specifically a women's issue. I, know, I was going to say, I know, yeah. at first I was going to say, oh, yes, because that will encourage female candidates. But then I was thinking, that's really sexist exactly. of me. <laughs> because well, <laughs> in, because in some families, there might just be one parent and sure. it might not be a female. Yes. Or there might be uh, two parents, but there's um, one who is the chief home child care provider mm -hmm. uh, who happens to be male mm -hmm. and he's the one who wants to run for office because mom might be a doctor at the emergency room and so she <laughs> works full time and can't take time off to take care of the kids so <laughs> well, you're exactly, right. Exactly Jane. Yeah. So that's a really good point. But <laughs> it takes one me thing. a while you know the things have to especially with the cold weather it mm -hmm. sort of has to go well to A then B then C hey light bulb. Yes. <laughs> but one thing they did say and, and this was you know Mike Connolly spoke really eloquently to this point is that you know while it's not a women's issue no. that this this would you know make it available for any parent, you know what I mean, who wants to run for elected office to make it more possible for them right. to use their campaign expenses, their campaign funds to pay for this expense, that still disproportionately right. child care does fall on women. And what this kind of what this legislation hopes to do is to make it more possible for women and in general for just low income parents, you know I mean, of, of whatever gender right. to, to to run for office, you know what I mean, to have a more diverse elected leadership. So I thought that was really interesting. No, um, I think, but it's still at the state house, it's being yeah. discussed, it's not quite there yet. And one thing, um, a point that Ayanna Presley actually brought up on the on the panel was that when she was running, she was a caregiver for her mother. So she did not have children, but she was a caregiver for her mom at the time. And what um, Senator Jalen is now considering is, you know, even though as Add written, in, in. this amendment has to do just with child care, she's been convinced by some colleagues that it would make more sense to make this more of a caregiver, you know, if you have expenses related to caregiving. Yep. Um, so it's not, it's not quite there yet. I don't think it's quite in the finished stage, um, but it was a really interesting conversation that I think many in Somerville were interested in. So. Yeah, I think that the elder care is, uh, or caregiver, mm -hmm. that, yeah, I think that would make it even more I think would make it even more applicable. Mm -hmm. uh, so I hope I hope they consider that, and mm -hmm. I'll be interested to read your story. 
And then um, we better wrap it up here so we can get out there and go buy the shovels and salt we're gonna need. <laughs> uh, so I think that there's a musical coming up at the Somerville High School. Yes, uh, just a little piece of good news. They're gonna be performing November 21st to 23rd, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. There's four performances. Um, I had the pleasure of going to visit one of their tech rehearsals the other day, which was truly barely controlled chaos. Um, but it was really incredible. Um, the director- I'm waiting for the title. Oh, In the Heights. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The musical they're performing is In the Heights, which is actually by now incredibly famous Lin-Manuel Miranda right, of, of right. Hamilton fame. Right. right. Um, and if you listen to the soundtrack, it, it is Lin-Manuel Miranda all over it. There's oh. rap, except this one, instead of being about our historical figures, is about Washington Heights, a neighborhood, a primarily immigrant neighborhood in New York City. Oh. Um, it's full of you know salsa and merengue and bachata. When I was there watching, these students are incredible dancers, really? as well as performers. Oh dear. Um, and what I think is really cool is that, um, like last year, they did Rent last year by Jonathan Larson, which has yeah. themes of you know um, poverty and AIDS. Um, this this year, they're learning about immigration and gentrification. That's what, a central theme to this musical. Wow. And when I was interviewing some of the students about this, they were hip to it they they were like oh yes we're learning we're learning about all these issues and we're so excited to have the opportunity to like teach the some real community about this through the musical which i thought was really cool so you have a preview article I have a preview article but i am also going to attend the musical well. i will be out of town unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. so i'm going to miss it but i am going to tell everybody i know including the people over in cambridge <laughs> So um, I think that just about wraps it up, Julia, for this, this edition of Somerville News Roundup with the Somerville Journal. I'm Jane Regan of Somerville Neighborhood News. To learn more about the stories that we talked about today, definitely check out the Somerville Journal online, uh, but also buying a copy of the paper would help pay Julia's salary. <laughs> Uh, so that would be very helpful, or cons and or consider subscribing to the online digital edition. Um, Somerville Neighborhood News is also online and on Channel 3. Just check it out on our website, somervillemedia.org. Thanks for being here today, Julia. Thanks for having me. And we'll see you next time.